Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, everybody. From Phoebe and John and Paula. Have a good day. Merry Christmas from the Mars Bombies. Have a good day. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Morning, everybody. Welcome to our Christmas Day devotional. It's always good to have you connected with us. Uh, as you may know, daily devotional started on the 28th of April 2020 and continued for 18 weeks, 90 days, Monday to Friday. It was so lovely to have people sharing God's word, testimonies and worship with us whilst we were in the first lockdown. But today is a special daily devotional because it's Christmas Day. Thank you to those who have tuned in to watch this on Christmas Day at 10 a.m. And also a big thank you to those who are watching Catch Up on our YouTube channel. Thank you for being connected with us on this special day. And as a Christmas special, I'm delighted to say that we have Jackie Elmore worshipping, Dick Chamming speaking, Paula showing us a retelling of the Christmas story, and many of you have recorded a special Christmas greeting. So before we begin, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you very much for this special day, Christmas Day. We thank you for your love for us, for your care for us. We thank you that for 90 days we were able to meet together online Monday to Friday, hosted by Ramon and Albertiza and hearing young and old sharing God's word together, praying together, worshipping together. I thank you, Lord, very much for the way that you met with us and touched our lives. How we experienced your love during those 90 days. And today I pray for us on this Christmas Day 2020. Father God, we thank you for the reminder that Christmas makes us uh, remember that you are closer than we think. That if we draw near to you today, you will draw near to us. Because of Jesus and through the Holy Spirit, you are God with us. Father, we thank you for your love for us. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love for us. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are with us. We praise your name, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We thank you. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a girl named Mary. She was engaged to marry a man named Joseph from the family of David. Oh, I'm okay. <laughs> the angel came to her and said, Greetings! The Lord has blessed you and is with you. But Mary was very startled <gasps> by what the angel said and wondered what this greeting would be. <laughs> the angel said to her, don't be afraid. Mary, God has shown you his grace. Listen, you will become pregnant and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord has, will give him the throne of King David, his ancestor. He will rule over the people of Jacob forever and his kingdom will never end. 
Mary said to the angel, How can this happen when I'm not yet married? The Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will cover you. And for this reason, the baby will be holy and called the Son of God. And Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it happen as you say. And then the angel went away. At that time, Augustus Caesar sent an order that all people in the countries under Roman rule mm -hmm. must list their names in a register. Mm -hmm. And all went to their own towns mm -hmm. to be registered. So Joseph left Nazareth, a town in Galilee, and went to a town of Bethlehem in Judea, known as the town of David. Joseph went there because he was from the family of David. Joseph registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was now pregnant. While they were in Bethlehem, the time came for Mary to have the baby, and she gave birth to her first son. Because there were no rooms left at the inn, Mary wrapped the baby with pieces of cloth and laid him in a feeding trough. That night, some shepherds were in their fields watching their sheep when an angel of the Lord appeared. stood before them. The glory of the Lord was shining around them and they became very frightened. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I am bringing you good news that will be a great joy to all people. Today your Saviour was born in the town of David. He is Christ the Lord. This is how you will know him. You will find a baby wrapped in pieces of cloth and lying in a manger. Then a very large group of angels from heaven joined the first angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, let there be peace among the people who please God. <laughs> who was lying in a feeding trough. When they had seen him, they told what the angels had said about this child. Everyone was amazed at what the shepherd said to them. Then the shepherds went back to their sheep, praising God and thanking him for everything they had seen and heard. It had been just as the angel had told them. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the time when Herod was king. When Jesus was born, some wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is the baby that was born to be king for the Jews? <laughs> we have seen his star in the east and we are here to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, as were all the people in Jerusalem. Herod called a meeting of all the leading priests and teachers of the law and asked them where the Christ would be born. They answered, in the town of Bethlehem in Judea. Then Herod had a secret meeting with the wise men. When did you first see the star? We saw it in the east. Go and look carefully for the child, and when you find him, come and tell me so I can worship him too. <laughs> After the wise men heard the king, they left. The star that they had seen in the east went before them, until it stopped above the place where the child was. When the wise men saw the star, they were filled with joy. They came to the house where the child was, and saw him with his mother, 
Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their gifts and gave him treasures of gold, frankincense and myrrh. But God warned the wise men in the dream not to go back to Herod, so they returned to their own country by a different way. John 3.16 says, For God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that anyone who believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life.
Good morning, everybody. I'm reading from Luke chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared, and uh, the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord, and this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. 
Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. The story starts with, with an emperor. I mean, he could have been discussing with his advisors about two things that probably occupied his mind from time to time, uh, money and the army. It was a time of peace, but he still needed an army. And the best way to get to grips with these issues was to, was to have a census. Then he would know how much cash was available through taxation and how many men he could recruit into his armed forces. Just in passing, Caesar Augustus, the man we're talking about, had various titles that might possibly ring a bell. He was known, for example, as bringer of peace to the earth, saviour of the world, bringer of good news. He was called son of God. <laughs> Isn't it fascinating that he happened to be emperor when the real owner of those titles was born? He would have been surprised if he'd been told that he had been used by God to make sure that his son would be born where he was supposed to be born. You, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of you will come a governor who will rule my people Israel. The instructions for the census would have only involved males going back to their hometown. So why did Joseph choose to take Mary with him? The obvious answer would be that Joseph knew that Mary had not long to go before the birth of her baby, and he didn't want to be in Bethlehem and Mary in Nazareth. But some people think that there was another reason. You see, at the time, Mary would have been ostracized in her family and community. She, she was going to be an unmarried mother. And this meant total rejection by the family and the neighbors. And Joseph, of course, would have wanted to be close to her to protect her from the attacks. Well, when they got to Bethlehem, there was no guest room available, so Mary and Joseph were compelled to bed down outside somewhere. Now Luke doesn't tell us, so we assume it must have been a stable, but it, it could possibly have been that uh, they would have been in the outdoor courtyard, where the only furniture would have been a manger and a water trough. She brought forth her firstborn, wrapped him in cloths and laid him in the manger. I mean, where else, where else could she lay him? Meanwhile, a very proud father has decided that he wants the birth of his son announced. I mean, there's nothing new here, is there? All proud fathers want people to know about their new offspring. The father of this baby calls an angel in and says, uh, learn this off by heart. And he gave him a message. Fear not. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a saviour. Christ the Lord. The angel probably then asked, uh, who shall we take this message to? And he would have been surprised when he was given the instructions. You're to go to some shepherds keeping watch over their flocks by night. Shepherds? <laughs> they were despised. They worked at night, which was dodgy, of course, and shepherds were despised by the orthodox good people of the day. They were quite unable to keep the details of the ceremonial law. They couldn't observe all, uh, observe all the meticulous hand washings and rules and regulations. They, they weren't allowed to testify in a law court. They weren't allowed in the temple. Anyway, back to the angel. Off he goes, probably rehearsing his speech. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a saviour, Christ the Lord. Unto you is born, and so on. Good news. A baby is going to be born, but he's going to be different than any other. If a baby is born this morning in Barnstable, there will probably be a note in the journal on Thursday. 
to Janet and John Smith, a baby boy or a baby girl. But this announcement is different. It's to you is born, not to Mary, to you this born, to a group of shepherds, to you is born. And of course, this takes us back to Isaiah chapter 9. You know, the, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death, on them has the light shined. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Tidings of great joy, because this birth is for us, to us. In other words, he's going to be totally relevant to us, even today. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. He spanned heaven and earth. The reason for his coming was for us, God with us, Emmanuel. God became a baby. He entered a world of problems and heartaches. He took a common name, Jesus, and made it holy. He could have lived over us or away from us, but he didn't. He lived among us. He became a friend of sinners and a brother of the poor. He touched their sores, felt their tears, paid for their mistakes. To all the frightened and vulnerable and those who are conscious of their sin and frailty, he comes with a message of salvation to us. Therefore, the joy can be ours. When a, when a child is born, various questions are asked, aren't they? Are mother and baby okay? How heavy was he? Who's he like? What are you going to call him? Well, he's going to be called, he's going to be called Saviour. Joseph's instructions were, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Which reminds us, of course, that it's impossible to think of Bethlehem without thinking of Calvary. And then he's going to be called Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One, the one the prophets foretold. And he's going to be the Lord. And of course, well, if you are Lord, I, I will worship you. If you're Lord, I will serve you. If you're Lord, I will love you. If you're Lord, I will learn from you. If you're Lord, I will obey you. And then the angel was joined by a huge number of other angels and they begin to make a lot of holy noise. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. And then they disappeared and returned to heaven. And the shepherd's response, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that's happened, which the Lord has told us about. The angel had told them how to find the baby. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Luke doesn't tell us how many mangers they looked at before they found the right one. A baby in a manger, though. A baby in a manger isn't much use, you know. The tiny feet that Mary tickled to make him laugh grew big and took him to the needy. But then they were nailed to a cross. The tiny hands that curled round his mother's fingers, they grew big and reached out to everyone around. But they were nailed to a cross. The voice that caused so much excitement when it uttered its first words developed and began to say wonderful things. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save the lost. I am come that you might have life, life overflowing. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Tidings of great joy today. And it's good news because, because like the shepherds, you and I can go and we can find him, but, but not in a manger. The, the message of the incarnation is come and see. Shepherds, they saw the angels, but that wasn't enough. They came and saw. Simeon and Anna, about a week later, they had a promise from God concerning Jesus, but that wasn't enough. They came and saw. The wise men saw a star, but that wasn't enough. They came and saw and worshipped. Don't let's be satisfied with angels and promises and stars. Let's come. Jesus says, everybody, come. Luke records that there were two responses. One from Mary, 
Mary pondered. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the other was from the shepherds. Mary, Mary pondered and the shepherds praised. The shepherds returned to their flock, ecstatic over what had happened. They praised God and glorified him for all they'd heard and seen. And today, you and I are invited to do the same. In fact, to do both. May we do just that. Ponder and praise. We pray that you will have a happy Christmas. And whether you're on your own or with family, you may know God's peace. And the fact that he is Emmanuel. God with us. God bless you. Happy Christmas! <laughs> I'm very happy that you've tuned in to watch this Christmas Day devotional. I'm so thankful for the people at Grosvenor Barnstable who've been such a part of mine and Debbie and my boy's life over the years. Wasn't it wonderful to watch everyone say Merry Christmas? So in case you missed it, 
on our YouTube channel. You can watch all 90 episodes of our daily devotional, along with over 50 sermons from January 2020 to December 2020. Those sermons, well, they include teaching from books of the Bible from, um, well, young Bible teachers like Jack Saunders, Tony Oatway on Luke's Gospel, Graham Poland uh, teaching on Peter's second letter, uh, Nick Brown and others teaching on the book of Jonah. And there's more on the YouTube channel. We have a whole family of YouTube channels. In fact, there's Grosvenor Children and Families, there's Grosvenor A to J for the youth, and a YouTube channel devoted to worship recorded by our Barnstable worship teams. Hours and hours of binge-worthy catch-up watching, teaching, worship, prayer for you to be encouraged and to grow spiritually. So, God bless you and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. God bless.